welcome to the Org 3D pod, everybody. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Mike uh, from Great Question. So Mike is head of sales over at Great Question, uh, customer research software solution. Good to have you here with us today, Mike. How are you doing? Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Jacob. Much appreciated. Doing well, man. Exciting times. 2024. Can't believe it's here already. I know. I know it's crazy. And yeah, uh, it's it's been a weird few years in the world of technology, software and everything else. But uh, yeah, I think people are feeling pretty op optimistic. Um, so yeah, excited for 2024 also. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. If there weren't any problems, there would be nothing to be excited to solve, right? So <laughs> exactly. And, you know, if it's too easy, it's boring, right? Exactly. Cool. Well, start off with Mike. I'd love for you to talk us through uh, a bit about your career journey so far. Um, as you'll know, a lot of our audience will be um, not only in software um, and, and tech, but actually specifically within sales. So, yeah, we'd love to hear about how uh, you got to where you are today. No, I appreciate that. So I grew up in San Francisco, uh, pretty much a native. I'm Eastern European, but came here when I was nine and uh, been in sales pretty much my entire life. Then everywhere from um, retail sales uh, to clothing, to insurance, to perfumes, all the way. One of my funnest jobs to date was selling bail bonds, actually. Um, but pivoted to the tech space around 2009. It was an interesting time in the, in the world in general after the collapse of real estate, et cetera. So got into tech for two reasons. One, um, I love it. Uh, I love the fact of having technology streamlining your day to day and making lives easier. Uh, I think uh, the most uh, brilliant people are there are the most lazy and technology is kind of bridges that gap. So um, love it. And two, I mean, there's, uh, you know, growing up in San Francisco, you're either uh, in tech, a doctor, a lawyer, or you're pretty much no one. So. <laughs> And I did not want to be a, I wanted to be a lawyer, but, uh, you know, didn't want to pay that legal bill of law school and, um, doctor is not in the cards. So got into tech, uh, and yeah, just fell in, absolutely in love with it. I started off working at, um, and I still do actually work for small companies. Uh, there have been times where there were acquisitions happen. We could get into that a little later, but I've always loved the concept of kind of taking ownership of not just sales, but account management, marketing, sometimes even accounting, uh, and obviously the C-suite to make better business decisions there. But yeah, uh, got into tech and got into more, of, uh, was doing more of IT consulting as a starting point, but eventually got into more of a specifically a sales role because once again, I've always been in love with sales. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, funny how you, you talk about uh, growing up in San Fran and you only got a few options. Sounds like, um, cool. And and what I mean, expensive place to live, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've got to be uh, hit hitting that OTE if you're going to uh, have fun, right? Oh yeah, or even <laughs> just have a place to live. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So you've been in and around this this world since like 2009. So what what changes? And that's by the way, that's as an IC and and a leader, right? So like, what changes have you seen? Do you think in um that world from from a seller's perspective in the way that we go about things or uh, anything else yeah i think in general from a sales standpoint especially in tech but i think globally um the consumer became a lot wiser given the resources that's available to them now you could google things you don't have to call around anymore and find out stuff if anything the consumer is coming a lot more educated to a specific sales process there are times where they want to be educated but now i think it's more of the former it's Hey, I've heard, or I've seen, or I've been told, and really looking for that subject matter expertise, but more importantly, building that trust right off the bat, if you will, mm -hmm. because if you start, you know, trying to lead them in different directions, which is not an authentic approach, they're going to automatically catch on to that. And, um, you know, it's probably not going to happen at that point. So I think really coming in uh, with an open mind as a sales professional and understanding that the consumer is a lot wiser now, um, you make the call whether you want to continue on that journey or decide to pivot them into a different direction, but making those calls up front and as fast as possible is appreciated, not just by yourself, but by your upper management, your organization, and for your own benefit as well. Yeah, no, really good point. I guess like from my perspective, I mean, I've only been operating in this world for, you know, 
for five years in terms of a sales perspective but like I can imagine it would have been a different environment when uh, prospects or the people that we're selling to trying to engage with maybe don't have the resources that everybody just takes for granted today whether it be the internet as a whole or um, yeah all the other educational resources uh, around uh, purchasing a product whatever that product might be yeah and it all come tying back to the consumer you know options are great but a lot of options is a little overwhelming sometimes it almost depletes the entire process so being a part of the narrow down list if you will as a starting point should be the automatic win for sales professionals in my opinion for instance i'll give you an example i was shopping for uh, an suv when my son was born and i did a lot of research we're talking about a big purchase right anywhere between 50 to 100 grand and I narrowed it down to three specific options before even talking to all of the dealerships. Uh, so when I came into that journey, I said, look, these are my three options based on my criteria that I've established. I had three criteria. I needed to have three rows. Uh, wanted to make sure that it was safe and reliable and wanted to make sure it's a V6 given current gas prices. So um, once I narrowed down that list, I already came and prepared to the consumer. And I was looking for who would be the right person that I could trust to fulfill that need, whether their SUV meets those needs or not, or um, we would be the right fit for um, to purchase their specific product. So narrow that down. And then after all those three meetings, narrowed it down to one specific one, negotiated the price and closed the deal. So yeah, the consumer is a lot wiser these days. That's what I would recommend for salespeople. Sometimes they'll even come in as a subject matter expert. Let them, let them, because they probably... You know, I, my son, that's the most personal thing possible, right? Of course, I did my due diligence before finding the right product that's going to keep him safe. Let them be the subject matter expert. If anything, be that additional resource, that additional supplement. And that's how you'll eventually build the trust and uh, hopefully get the sale. Yeah, makes sense. Great advice. Cool. Okay, so let, let's move on to sort of where you are today. It's a great question. Talk to us a bit about sort of uh, your your journey so far with those guys, Mike. And um okay what you guys are actually doing out there? Yeah, so great question is a research automation platform. Uh, what we've seen in the research uh, product and design space is that professionals need anywhere from five, sometimes up to 15 tools to scale research ops efficiently. And obviously that doesn't scale. So we're trying to democratize, mitigate all of that, if not remedy all of that using our platform. Professionals need anywhere from a scheduling tool, a customer or relationship management tool, they need a tool to incentivize. They need a tool to do surveys and screeners. Then they need to have a repository tool where all of that recording, all those transcripts ended up in one umbrella. Then you need to have a synthesis tool or an analysis tool to start digging deeper into that transcription and video to provide highlight reels or a specific reporting to make better business decisions within the organization, whether that's building a better product, the, uh, decreasing uh, churn, or whatever the case may be, that's their ultimate KPI and goal. But we're trying to put that as much under one platform so professionals are actually doing, using their time to do more research as opposed to navigating between different tools and making sure they compile data uh, to get their job done. Uh, we're a small team of about 22 right now, but we're operating lean and mean and working with Fortune 100 companies at this point uh, because of the value add. Uh, once again, as I mentioned earlier, when technology makes life easier, you know, people gravitate more towards that. And the, the ideal customer persona, the people that we work with, they're researchers, right? So talk about becoming prepared to a sales cycle. <laughs> I mean, these are the professionals that get it done. So being authentic and uh, really gravitating towards what they actually need versus what you want to sell them has been the game changer for us. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. And my personal um, experience in this space is through companies that I've worked with. And I remember being initially amazed at how many software tools there were for that sort of journey for a research professional or a consumer insights professional. And honestly, I'm you didn't ask me to say that, right? This is <laughs> this is not a pre-agreed uh, segment. But yeah, so sure, um, yeah, good. a partnership. You look, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look at other spaces and you do see these platforms where okay, this is a one-stop shop for X, Y, Z. Um, but yeah, I just noticed that it did seem very segmented in this specific space. So it's interesting that, that you say that. Um, and again, not a loaded question, but what's the competition like for a platform like this in terms of a one-stop shop, if you like? Um, are you guys sort of quite unique out there or, or how does that look? 
I'd say we're fairly unique. There's other companies that are trying to, you know, reinvent what we're trying to do. I will say that it comes back to features and functionality, right? There are competitors out there that have been around for 10 years uh, that are doing scheduling and incentivizing. Some are doing external panel recruitment. Some are doing just specifically repository. So when you combine all that functionality under one umbrella, it always comes back to, well, this other company that just does specifically repository, this XYZ, are you guys doing that? And if not, when will you be able to? So catching up to those specific trends and making sure you're staying ahead of the game has been, um, I wouldn't say the challenge for us, but more of the, the ultimate goal. And just making sure to keep track of those tallies of what's really trending from a features and functionality space that's going to really accommodate our ICP, um, which we do very well, in my honest opinion. That's why we're winning these Fortune 100 deals is because we really take that consultative approach of if we don't have it, let's be strategic about when we will uh, test it out, when we will build it out, when we'll be ready to have that in front of you, and when we'll be ready to have that in front of your participants your observers, et cetera, to make sure that you're getting good value out of it. Yeah, totally makes sense. And who, who is your um, perfect ICP? I imagine there's a bit of a variety, but talk to me a bit about that. Yeah, so there's two sides of research. And by the way, uh, I want to set the stage right off the bat, Jacob. I am not a, a research expert. I'm a sales expert. Uh, it's all about you know bringing relationships together, and it's all about trust. That's end of day what sales is. Uh, but I will say there's two sides of research uh, from what I've been told by my uh, colleagues at subject matter experts. There's quantitative and then there's qualitative research. And we fo focus mainly on the latter, qualitative. It's getting on interviews, uh, just discussing about whether it's uh, your experience with the product or what would you want to see. There's you know thousands of ways to, uh, as they say, skin a cat. Uh, but our main, uh, what we've seen, uh, our ICP is UX researchers. Mm. Um and then there's the obviously product managers who sometimes run their own research depending on the size of the organization. Then there's the designers uh, as well. So yeah, I would say research and then product and design would be our top three ICP at the moment. Awesome, awesome, that's that's interesting. Okay, and tell me a bit more then about um, sort of what the future looks like for the great question. Um, and that could even be, you know, the next six months this year. Yeah, you know, we're right at the beginning, aren't we? So what, what do you guys have in store for this year, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's all about coming with features and functionality, right? We're working some of these bigger deals and really trying to deliver on a lot of these aspects. Uh, you know, for instance, one of our features that we're working on is uh, consent forms. We already have that feature, but how do we take it a step further? Um, there's a lot of functionality that is being requested of some of these bigger organizations. Uh, but once again, taking that consultative approach and really making sure we're building it out is great. And then there's that two letters that everyone keeps talking, right? AI. <laughs> I don't know if anyone... <laughs> Everyone's probably been hearing about that nonstop. So okay. how do we continue to democratize. How do we continue to automate? Um, and once again, give the subject matter experts the time back in the day to either gather more research, have time to analyze more research, or get strategic about what research needs even needs to happen uh, in order to make uh, the company a better, the company or their product better. Yeah, exciting. Okay. And then just sort of um, moving away from great question a little, um, obviously my role outside of doing things like this is, is hiring for like sales organizations or, um, uh, commercial organizations. So from your perspective, uh, as, as somebody who's a hiring manager, somebody who's a sales expert, firstly, like, what are you seeing uh, at the moment from, um, the talent pool would love to hear your thoughts on that as somebody that's a hiring manager. Yeah. Well, you know, I think we talked about it earlier. Tech is, tech is struggling right now. Um, a lot of overhiring has happened. A lot of uh, redundant efforts are, have been deployed. Uh, and now people are feeling that pain from a fiscal standpoint, from an operational standpoint, from a management standpoint. So I think um, where I'm seeing the sales space, uh, me personally, is how do we find the right subject matter experts that are passionate about the actual space itself? Me, when I first joined, for instance, I... I have a, a process I follow. It's people, product, and purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to work with good people. I want to make sure the product actually solves a good initiative. And is, is it a product that I want to learn in this industry? And I've always been passionate uh, about learning more about the product space in general. I know it sounds a little redundant, but, um, you know, product managers, I'm fascinated with product managers, chief product officers. I think 
they wear many hats and they have a lot of deliverables that are sometimes unreasonable, but they execute. And just having that management aspect alone of multitasking, wearing many hats between marketing, design, dev, et cetera, uh, research uh, is fascinating to me. So I feel like um, in the sales space specifically, we're looking for someone, you know, are, if you want to come and work with us, for instance, are you passionate about the product space? Are you passionate about research? Why? Um, and really honing in on that. And, you know, my advice to salespeople right now is if your next role, if you're looking, if you're shopping for something, is don't just start applying for roles. Write down the things that you're truly passionate about, that you want to learn, that you want to feel fulfilled by. Don't join a a ballet shoe company <laughs> or a, a dancing company if you hate dancing or something along those lines. Um, find the right products that you want to learn and then eventually reiterate that uh, passion to the actual hiring manager and then see if there's going to be a fit. Yeah, I, I, th I think um, I think you're right in terms of you've got to find something specific that, that you're passionate about and really focus your efforts on becoming involved with that. You know, if we're talking about employment here, but could say that about anything but yeah i think definitely at the moment um people i speak to are not you know you and it hasn't been this case for years but we're not seeing you're not seeing success as somebody who's looking for a new job by just pinging in applications left right and center um i think it should be targeted in the same way your outreach as a seller should be um also and, and what about um advice for people who are looking out for a new role what do you think people should be doing to stand out um from, from the crowds it's one of my favorite questions, man. Um, I've seen, you know, I, we get applications daily, sometimes dozens, and it baffles me to this day about how people forget who they are when it comes to sales. You are a professional, almost like a companionator, if you will. You are the person that bridges, uh, creates the relationship. So just by sending out a piece of paper, this is who I am. Are you interested? Is, is, you know, if in my, I like to say, if you apply, you die when it comes to sales, pick up that phone, find out who that hiring manager is. What is he passionate about? Why is he there? How long has he been there? Or she, excuse me, um, reach out to them, introduce yourself, ask, ask some questions. You know, there's, there's that whole concept of you're going to be doing this in the role. Why aren't you doing this now to get the role? Exactly. That's what baffles me. And um, I say, if anyone sends me just a resume, thank you for your time. If you send me a text message, if you call me, leave me a voicemail, and you send me a, a specific, I've had guys send me 30, 60, 90s as part of their application or what they're going to be doing. They get a meeting with me automatically. The one word when it comes to sales and I think startups or in general and success is initiative. Take the initiative. Do not wait for someone to ask you for, to ask you for something, create the problem if you have to, but you already see the problem. We're hiring someone. There's a problem. We need to fill a space. So take the initiative by solving that problem and sending out a piece of paper, AKA a resume or cover letter is not it anymore. There's thousands, tens of thousands of people out there if not hundreds of thousands that are looking for this role, hunting for this specific role, take the initiative, go the extra mile. And I guarantee you, you will at least get a meeting out of it. And um, hopefully one step closer to getting that role that you want. Yeah. Great advice. And yeah, as you said, sales is unique in that you can actually do something in that um, hiring phase or in the recruitment phase is first-hand evidence of what your skill set will be like and what you'll be doing in your day-to-day -day role. Like you couldn't say that about anything else, right? So, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think, yeah, treat it as a sales cycle. Um, I will say um, the last three positions that I've attained, not a single resume was involved. Mm -hmm. I reached out directly to the CEO or the hiring manager, and I started talking, why are you looking for this role? Tell me what the problem is. Uh, is someone leaving? Are you guys just... There's too many leads coming in for you to deal with. Do you not have the right talent currently that you want to kick out? <laughs> mm -hmm. Why? Why Why are we have five account executive roles open right now? And can we get that down to one maybe, depending on are you just trying to spray and pray or is this 
more strategic, but asking those questions as opposed to here's my resume. Do you like me or not? Mm. I think the, uh, the former is always going to be in your favor. So I've reached out. And I said, look, this is what I'm going to do for you. Now that I know what your problem is, here's my 30, 60, 90. This is my expertise. This is where I don't do a good job, by the way. For instance, I am not a sales ops guy. For me to get strategic on pulling together reports and that, it's necessary, but it's not the it's best suited for me. Set those expectations in advance. Do you want to improve upon them? Yes. Don't just say, no, I'm not doing this. Say why you're not doing it, why you're not good at it, but have... I, but I will find someone that will be there or I have a friend that does this or I'm going to hire a, an executive assistant or something to do that. Initiative. Initiative is the number one thing. That's what leaders want. They're going to be paying you hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to bring business to them and get let the company grow. That initiative is going to take you miles and way ahead of the competition. When I applied for all, the last three roles, everyone else took a back seat because I took these steps that I've learned from my mentors. Love it. Really good advice. Thanks. Thanks for that, Mike. And um, yeah, I think we've got some good stuff in um, for maybe product or, or research professionals um, who might be interested in what we started to talk with, but talk about, pardon me. But um, yeah, some really uh, helpful stuff for sales folk who are out there, um, either looking for the next role or um, thinking about um, making approaches for, for new positions. So uh I think um, that's all we've got time for today, Mike, but thank you so much um, for joining us. It's been really, really helpful. Maybe we'll reconvene at the start of 2025 and see what uh, see what has happened uh, for this year. It's a year to catch up again, man, but I appreciate you having well, me. Well, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have a beer offline or something like that, but yeah, we'll, we'll do a 2024 review in a year's <laughs> time. Thanks for having me, man. Really appreciate it. And uh, keep crushing it out there. Yeah, same to you. Thanks so much, Mike. Cheers.